We're just on the banks of the river wall now, just mixing up our grain bait. Start off a base mix, three bags of grain bait, two bags of French dem, one bag of roach. Into that, two litres of crushed hemp, two litres of brown crumb. After we've mixed up, we add four litres of soil. We start off a mix, all mixed up dry, and then we wet it up. Now, a lot of mix for this type of venue, an aggressive venue, loads of fish, starting off very sticky. And always mixed up using the drill. <laughs> Not too cautious on the water, as I do want it overweighted to start off with. And again. Nice and easy, heavy and overweighted to start off with. Leave that now for 20 minutes, half an hour, come back to and the soil. Just finished off the mix now, I've added the soil, a little bit more water, that's a lovely sticky mix. And what we're going to do is we're going to load that mix up with hemp seed and also some dead maggots, what we've kept from previous matches, to load up the grain bait. That's the one side. We've also got for a heavy loose feed almost eight points of hemp, four points of casters and about four to five points of bronze and red maggots. Hopefully, if all goes to plan, we're going to start off with some heavy feed of grain bait into the peg, let that break up and loose feed over the top. And as we gauge ourselves into the session and into the match, we'll top it with grain bait and loose feed and find out which is best on the day. I'm just going to quickly show you the amount of feed I introduced into my initial Balling into the peg and how rich the balls are what go in. Start off with a big handful of dead maggots, same with casters, and then two big handfuls of hemp. Stir that round. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is how much bait I can get into one ball and still make a solid ball of grain bait. That's the most important thing. So as you can see, I can get more bait into that feed. We put a bit more hemp in, and a few more casters. We've got a lovely, overwetted, claggy mix, which will help us ball up. That's nearly there now. So I'm going to make up about seven or eight big rock hard balls. But due to the amount of feed and product in the grain bait, we should break up relatively quickly into the peg. really is a lovely sticky mix which is important when you're introducing this much product into the grain bait.
Keep them hands clean as you're bowling up. So there we go, our eight balls ready for our initial bowling in on the whip line. We're just about to introduce the balls into the swim. And what we have to work out is the exact position in the peg where the rig is going to be fishing and perfect ready to catch the fish over the feed. The last thing we want is our ground bait too far up the swim and our rig isn't fishing before it gets to it. Simply, I drop my rig in as I normally would and let the rig start to fish down the river. As it's dropping down the river, all the shots are settling now, settling, 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 fishing. So now I know exactly how that rig is working when it's settled in the peg. And at that exact point where the rig is fishing perfectly, that is where the ground bait will go. On a faster river, the farther down river, on a bigger rig, it can be closer up with that. But with this rig, this peg, that is exactly where my initial balls are going to go. Just going to start off now, straight over that balling area and just see if there's any fish come straight to the noise and straight to the feed. All the time, loose feeding into the swim. Heavy hemp seed and some maggot and castor. Oh, boat straight away over that ground bait. Possibly a small dice coming into the peg early doors. There we go, fish on. Little chunky roach. Didn't take long to come straight over that heavy grain bait we introduced into the peg. Wind's causing us a lot of problems today, which is why it's so important to keep full control and in line with your rig. Nice size dice. As you can see then, if I feel the bait is okay, I'll carry on using it. Heavy loose feeding all the time. Another decent sized fish there. Right over that grain bait. Just as the rig set, I'll lower it down. Cracking size roach right there. Just ease it round up onto the chest. Lovely stamp of fish this year on the River Y. In again, back fishing. As you'll notice with my loose feed being introduced into the peg. I'm going maggots and castors just slightly upstream. Hemp seed basically in front of me. And obviously my ground bait went down. Another roach there. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to anticipate the weight of the feed. So the hemp and castors lighter, hemp's heavier, Hopefully everything lands over that concentrated area. And the beauty of having a long line, fishing a long big whip, 
These may be signature whips. If I want to, I can let it go past the feed and hopefully catch some wary roach. But at the minute, they are right on that grain bait. Clonking fish. Lovely chublet there. Lovely stamped chublet again then. Really are white builders. Really aren't long into the session now. And we're already getting a picture of how these fish want to feed. When it's a big white match, you need to be on the ball so quick and figure out how these fish want to feed in the peg on the day. They're already right on that ground bait. It's the only place we want to be. Smashing up them balls of ground bait. But we've filled up with bait. The chublet there choking up tons of hemp and castor. Just shows that this venue really is not for the faint hearted when it comes to feeding bait. There you go, another fish right on the ground bait. Really is a good stamp dice. Same again, casters. Hemp just downstream. Easy rig. Just getting to the ground bait now. Bite. And just repeat the process again and again. Nice and smooth. Just looking at hook baits now, we've got a size 14 hook on, we'll start off with one maggot fully threaded onto the hook. Now if we start having problems getting smashed up, normally by chublets, I will literally just nip another one on the bottom of the hook. This will just give me a bit more time and hopefully one or two more fish on the same hook bait. Again, using your time wisely. We've just come, uh, tried to speed things up a little bit. Just seen a few dice swirling on the loose feed. They've slightly changed things, shallowed up, a couple of foot deep. About five and a half metres in, just loose feeding maggots. I'm just starting picking up, picking up the pace, catching shallow now. But still, quality sized dice to be caught. With the, odd, with the odd roaching amongst them still. <coughs> uh. 
There you go. Decent sized dice. Off the bat, I'm in amongst that loose feed. All the time. That bait's going in. As you can see, I've changed my feeding slightly. As I'm feeding my maggots now, slightly downstream so I can flick my rig right on top of that loose feed where the fish are feeding shallow. As to earlier where I was feeding it, just in front of me, maybe slightly to the left. I'm feeding slightly down, oh, fish on then. Bringing my, my rig right into that loose feed in the shallow water. There you go, another fish. I even think they're coming slightly shallower than that now. <coughs> you go, but they are still are good sized fish. Little chublet there. Same as before, if you make it okay, carry on fishing. Just saving time. Bite then. There you go. Another little chunky dice and the same maggot. Fresher thread maggot on again and just repeat the process. There you go. Really are coming up in them upper layers now. We started catching shallow now up in the water. Still the same size fish, quality fish. Clonking dice. Also roach and chublets. Literally two foot deep, but could could potentially come shallow as they are swirling now. There we go. A nice simple flick out with a rig. Loose feed, check the float. Strike. Just a little flick on the wrist. That's all it needs. Quality fish. Every time I strike, I don't want to be pulling the rig out of the water. I only want to pull it like six inches. That's all it is. There you go, six inches. Little strike, let it go again. All about using your time wisely. Not wasting any time. And let the fish look. Just a little strike into the fish. There you go. Fish are choking up the maggots now. You can see how the how the sessions developed, you know, early doors we was fishing over the ground bait, catching more roach really, fishing double caster mostly, right over the ground bait, and now we come right into the feed, fishing in them lower layers, catching dice mostly.
So we've just started catching them in closer now. It's coming on the four metre shallow whip. Catching clonking roach maybe 18 inches deep. <coughs> and as you can see, they're swirling on my bait now, the fish are. Roach, dice, chublets, all coming in close. I've changed my whole approach to feeding to just maggots. Try and keep them fish shallow where they seem to have brought themselves. There you go, nice little flick out of the whip. Feeding. Drop that rig just into that feed. Fish on. Proper sized fish. Literally now, all I'm, all I'm fishing really is an overgun bleak whip. Slightly bigger hook, heavier line. There you go. I think that's even foul hooked. Just shows how many fish we have feeding now. Flip that rig in again. Almost having to really play these fish now they're so big. When you're catching them at such close quarters, it goes from catching a medium weight to a, a huge weight, really. There you go, proper fish on now. I think it's foul looked again. Swan's in the peg. Big foul look dice. <clears throat> I do speak to a, a good friend of mine, Danny Ashington, who says the peg he draws, he draws, he catches more foul looked fish than he does in the mouth. A common problem on some pegs. Go. Nice stamp roach, 18 inch deep. What a venue. We've had a fantastic couple of hours on the River Wye showing you through my ways to approach whip fishing and pole to end up to 8 metres. I hope it helps you on your next competition rating. Thanks very much.